Hey guys, here today at the Flight 93 Memorial. This place is located about an hour's drive outside of Pittsburgh in rural Pennsylvania. One cool thing about traveling for sales is oftentimes you have a little bit of free time. Behind me is a tower, 93 feet tall, representing Flight 93. There's some wind chimes. I'm gonna walk around, see what else is here in this memorial, uh, this field that's become a memorial and a national monument uh, dedicated to those who died uh, on September 11th of 2001. One thing I wasn't expecting is how big this place is. I thought it was just a memorial a few acres big. Turns out it's several square miles. The tower that I just showed is just at the entrance. You drive past that down a road a couple of miles before you even get to the museum and the crash site. Along the way, there's some trails and there's some overlooks, a few things to do if you wanna take in some of the scenery. So I parked my car and walked out onto what they call the Memorial Plaza. It was a beautiful fall day. Leaves were just changing colors. But you walk around and you read on these displays what was going on during the morning of September 11th, 2001. And I really like this display here, which shows the 40 victims. It shows photographs of them. And you really get to understand the story of what they went through on that morning. From the Memorial Plaza, you walk several hundred yards down this pathway that has this concrete barrier. Now, the concrete barrier exists because this is the outer range of where they found debris from the wreckage of Flight 93. If you looked in the distance, there is a boulder way out there, and that is where the crash site actually was. That was the impact crater was there. They don't let people down there unless it's on September 11th or unless you are a family member of one of the victims. Now, if you walk down this pathway far enough, you get to the Wall of Names. And this is a marble wall that features the names of the 40 victims. And interesting because this wall is in the flight path. It's in the flight path that points down to the boulder where the impact crater was. Now you can either drive or walk up to the visitor center. But as you approach the visitor center, you follow this path. It's the same flight path. And it dissects the walls of the visitor center. Ultimately, you come out onto this porch, this overlook. And you can see down below you into the field and all the way down to the wall of names. And you can even spot the boulder in the distance probably the best view you're going to find anywhere in the area. Once you go into the visitor center, just be prepared. You're gonna get sucked in to the story, the timeline, and the events that occurred that morning. There are newscasts, there are recordings, there are diagrams. They've got calls for loved ones. They've got a whole bunch of information here that just draws you in and absolutely helps you remember what was going on that morning. And really above all, you get into the mind of these 40 people and what they were going through. Remember, these were the true heroes of 9-11. They fought back against the terrorists. And this display I thought was really powerful. It showed the inside of the airplane and what they were facing as they stormed the cockpit. 
And of course, we know how the story ends in tragedy. And just be prepared that you can breeze through this whole place. But if you spend some time here, it absolutely can be an emotional experience for you. I was really impressed with the 9-11 Memorial. This place definitely brings out the feelings of September 11th. I expected to be here about a half hour. I ended up spending over two hours here walking around. There's a lot to it. It's pretty big. It's about a two or three mile square area. And between the walls that you walk through, the memorials, and also the visitor center, you really do reflect upon that day. It captured it very well.